Eva Levante, they say you should give a dawning gift when you have a special friend. He boomed, trying to whisper. Who is they? I laughed. He ignored me. I bought my friend this bow. Is it a good gift? Welcome back, Guardians. Today we have a more festive lore video which relates to the Dawning, Lord Shax, and Mara Sov. With the release of the Dawning update, we have some more information about the Lord Shax Mara Sov love affair. The Dawning lore entries can be unlocked by baking the Dawning Delights using the oven, and in order to get Shax's entry, you need to bake the vanilla blades. On a side note, Ada 1's lore book was meant to start dropping today in game, however I don't believe anyone has received it yet, but her book is now in the API and available on ishtarcollective.net, so we will cover Ada 1's story very soon. As usual, the artwork at the beginning of this video was provided by Gamma Trap. All Patreon donations go towards paying Gamma Trap for his artwork, link in the description with rewards, which includes digital versions of the art. You can also find Gamma Trap on YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. The links are below. I don't take anything from the Patreon donations, but if you'd like to support me, channel memberships are also available with their own rewards and perks. Press the join button or link in the description for iPhone users. This is Marlin Games, and I hope you enjoy this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. By now, most people have heard of the phrase, the helmet stayed on. But just in case you haven't, our story about Lord Shax and Marasov starts here. Marasov is in the Dreaming City, and the time period appears to be before the events of the Taken King, because she mentions that her plans are now in motion, and that she has nothing else to do but wait. I assume she is waiting and is referring to the Awoken battle with Oryx and her plans to claim his throne. So Marasov is in the Dreaming City and she is using the Wall of Wishes to make a bargain with the Ahamkara Riven. The Wall of Wishes can actually be seen in the Last Wish Raid and it was designed by the Techians as a way of making bargains with Riven without Riven taking advantage of their wish. There are multiple occasions where Riven manipulates wishes to her advantage, a bit like making a deal with the devil. So the Wall of Wishes uses symbols, so it is more difficult for Riven to manipulate their wishes. Have a listen to the Helm of the Great Hunt, where Riven says this, And so the witches devise an impossible machine that speaks a visual language with very few spaces between its words. This machine speaks wishes makes bargains. The Wall of Wishes, it is called. If the Techian's design proves correct, it will be difficult for me to interpret the wishes made at the Wall to my advantage. But challenges entice me. I look upon the Wall, upon the wishes visual language for bargains. For me, it is a menu of delights to feast upon. So Marasov is at the Wall of Wishes and makes a wish. The Mark of the Great Hunt reads, the cosmic balance shifted. Somewhere in the Dreaming City, Riven heard the Queen's wish, and a thousand shrieking tears in reality cut through the space in front of her. Lord Shax suddenly blocked Mara's view of the wall. Yes, and we'd all be dead. He was screaming at no one, with a mug of caffeine in his fist. He started, almost spilling his coffee. Where are we? Mara slapped the mug out of his hand. It shattered on the floor. She shoved a weathered book in his face. I told you there would come a time when I collect for the reef wars. Read this out loud. No one tells me what to do, he said, grabbing the book and incinerating it in a bolt of striker lightning. I could recite the tempest by heart. And he did. Mara sat and listened. They stayed for a long time. The helmet stayed on. Yes, Marasov uses an Ahamkara wish to summon Shax to the Dreaming City. She then demands him to read Shakespeare's The Tempest, which he then incinerates only to recite it word for word to Marasov. The helmet stayed on is obviously a reference to whatever they got up to, and Shax's helmet was never removed. I don't think this lore entry should be taken too seriously. 
However, if you do take it seriously, it is pretty ridiculous. Mara uses an Ahamkara wish to summon Shax for a booty call. Summoning Shax to one of the most secret and sacred places of the Awoken, the Dreaming City, summoning an outsider like Shax is a pretty big deal. I think this also comes as a bit of a shock because Mara Sov was previously in love with a female Awoken named Shaw Ido, an Awoken so important to Mara Sov that she was given her own statue in the Shattered Throne. I covered the law of Shaw in my Wish Ender Law video. But when you actually look closely at what Mara values in a relationship, it becomes obvious why Mara is interested in Shax. Have a listen to what Mara says to Shaw in the Telic 2 law entry. It reads, Shaw, Mara said, falling to her knees, clutching her beloved's face between shaking hands. Shaw, on the day you worship me, you cannot love me anymore. For to worship is to yield all power, and I cannot love what has no power over me. Mara cannot love anyone who worships her. She does not appreciate anyone who has no power over her. So the fact that Shaq says, no one tells me what to do, is exactly what Mara wants from a partner. So with all that being said, was Shaq's infamous encounter with the Queen just a one night stand, or was it something more? Well, Shax thinks there is something else there. In the new Dawning Law, the Say It With A Dawning Gift law entry, Shax visits Eva Levante to ask for advice on a present. The law entry is written from Eva's perspective and reads, I was stealing a moment of quiet one afternoon to organize all the jumbled rolls of wrapping paper when I heard a resonant voice calling to me. How I jumped. It was a certain well-known titan not Zavala, but I will not tell you who. Eva Levante does not tattle about sensitive matters. He was carrying a formidable piece of weaponry, a complicated curve of many metal parts with a thick string connecting the ends. It's a compound bow, he explained, following my stare. For shooting arrows, I raised my eyebrows in puzzlement. On that weapon, he had placed a large poof of red velvet ribbon. A bow on a bow. I could tell from the tilt of his helmet and his taut grip on the weapon that something was amiss. I sighed. I saw this a few times every dawning. I suspected he was smitten, and this would not be a short conversation. Warmest dawning greetings to you, Torito. That is not his actual name, naturally. It is a made-up name. Eva Levante, they say you should give a dawning gift when you have a special friend. He boomed, trying to whisper. Who is they? I laughed. He ignored me. I bought my friend this bow. Is it a good gift? It all depends on your friend. What do they like? What are they like? Can you describe them? She likes to fight. She is regal. She is very... The Titan paused. Is a recurve bow more romantic than a compound bow? He managed to whisper this time. Ah, I nodded knowingly. I wouldn't know the difference between those weapons, but I understood his problem. But maybe a book would be better, he asked. Again, it depends which book you choose. I have read Akora's On Circles Revised Edition, and it was very good. That is a terrible dawning gift. Might I suggest literature? Torito tapped the horn on his helmet to reflect. I did destroy a book of hers once. Should I replace it? Maybe you should not remind her of a bad thing happening. He didn't reply to this, so I went on. Perhaps this bow is already the right dawning gift for your friend. Do you think she would use it? Definitely. Well then, I smiled. You have your answer. Happy dawning to you and your friend both. Well, there you have it. Lord Shax has bought a present for Mara Sov for the dawning, a compound bow. Which, to be honest, is not a bad choice because the Awoken's first weapons on the original Awoken home planet was in fact the bow. Then again, maybe a bow would remind Marisov of her lost love, sure. Uh, the complexities of a destiny relationship. I hope that the next time we see Marisov in her court, there is a bow with a bow somewhere in that room. It'd be so cool to see that Shax actually gave the present to Marisov.
It seems that Shax wants to continue to pursue a relationship with Mara Sov. Eva Levante believes he's even smitten with Mara. That concludes this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. Hope you found this less serious topic still enjoyable. I'll be back soon with Ada 1 lore, but if you'd like to support the channel and cannot think of a comment, you can leave the phrase, the helmet stayed on. As usual, it has been a pleasure. This is Mylan Games. Peace.